you know that 87% of the permanent collections of 18 major art museums and galleries in the United States consist of works by male artists? And while only 5% of artists in the modern art sections of museums are women, 85% of the nudes displayed in those same spaces are female. So is this because only men are capable of aesthetic greatness or could it be that for centuries the art world has been unwilling to accept the intellectual and creative authority of female artists? Art historian and curator Flavia Frugheri is answering those questions in her most recent book titled Women Artists. By featuring 50 of them, ranging from the Baroque era to today, the book is helping reframe female contributions to the history of art, not as objects, but rather as creators. Equipping readers with an all-round understanding of art history, this compilation is giving women like Artemisia Gentileschi, the Guerrilla Girls, Cindy Sherman or Mona Hatum the long overdue recognition they deserve. Now, to help us deconstruct some of the art history's male-dominated grand narratives, historian and curator Flavia Frigeri joins me. Hi Flavia, thank you so much for joining us on Showcase today. So I know it's uh, probably one of the most famous and important questions of feminist art history, but I want to hear your take on it. How do you answer this question? Why have there been no great women artists? I mean, why is the category of genius confined to male artists? Well, I think uh, really the issue has been that women have not, in many senses, um, allowed to really emerge as fully-fledged artists. And this has to do really with uh, society and the conditions in which they were put. And I'm thinking here, especially in the past, um, women were obviously, the demands on them were to be um, housewives, to be mothers, and thus the pri priorities were others. Uh, their role as artists and contributors to art was always put to one side. And these artists, how did they work? I mean, did they use pseudonyms or were they anonymous? Um, in some cases, I mean, they chose to change their names um, to either very gender neutral sounding names, as for instance, the pop artist Evelyn Axel, she went by Excel. Um, and her purpose with that was to be intentionally confusing. You would read the name and don't quite know whether it was a woman or a man. Um, and that's, that really enhanced her chances of exhibiting her work. Um, in other cases, women stuck to their own names, but obviously there was always this bias towards women as if they were almost like this inferior category of artists. It was almost people would look at their names first and then at their art and really judge them on their gender um, and not on what they were producing. I mean, I might sound a bit naive here, but I wonder why is it so hard for people to accept the fact that women as well, created, painted, sculpted great works of art. Um, so I think, you know, um, you're touching here on really a key question, the one um, around why is it so hard for society to accept the presence of women and um, women were contributing um, across the board, you know, in terms of art, but also literature, writing, they were present, but the issue was recognizing their presence. I think that's really what we're being asked to do now and especially when we look back on artists from the Renaissance, from the Baroque, who were really present all along the way but very often they were working in the background and their names are still being brought to the fore. They were maybe, you know, in, at the times, and I'm thinking here of the Renaissance, the Baroque, there were many women working in famous artist workshops, but because of their gender, um, they weren't really recognized for their work. I mean, take Italian uh, Baroque painter Artemisia Gentileschi, for example. It took centuries for art historians to recognize her paintings as hers, not her father's, although she actually signed them. Well, I mean, Artemisia is probably these days one of the most uh, famous and widely recognized artists. Last year, the uh, National Gallery purchased uh, a work of hers here in London. It went on view. It's currently on, on a tour. And it was really felt like something that 
um, should be done, and she is part of our history and um, needs to be represented. But as you rightly point out, it wasn't always that the case. Um, for a long time, she was very much overshadowed by her father. And this is just one example of many women who were overshadowed either by their fathers or by their husbands. And why did you think it was a good time now in 2019 to publish this book? Right now, you know, we're speaking more about uh, and think I'm thinking here of Me Too and also, you know, of recent conversations about women's rights. We're thinking more about the place of women in society. And for me, it was important to show the place that women held in society in terms of arts. Um, and I felt you could really do that only by covering the arc from, you know, the more historical women to the more contemporary ones. Flavia Frigeri, thank you so much for shedding some light on this issue for us today.